Joe James and in this video we're going to talk about IPv6 addressing and subnetting. First I want to show you this cool graph here that I found on Google. This shows you how IPv6 is being adopted. Uh, it's pretty fast pace here in 2015 now approaching 7% of web traffic on Google and it's ramping up very quickly. IPv4 still has 93% of web traffic but IPv6 is growing very quickly. IPv4 addresses in review here um, they're 32 bits, so you have 32 bits, four blocks of eight bits is how they're written, and they're separated by a period. So they're expressed as four decimal numbers. IPv4 uses a decimal number, and it's only up to three digits each, so it's only up to 12 digits in an IPv4 address. So each of these three decimal numbers ranges from 0 to 255. Now an IPv6 address has 128 bits, that's four times more bits. So it's arranged as eight blocks of 16 bits. It's quite a bit longer, it's a little more challenging to read and write these. So they are colon separated instead of period separated. And you could think of it as x colon x colon x colon x colon with eight x's, where each x represents 16 binary bits, if that's an easier way to think of it. We can also um, look at this example here. We've taken a 128-bit address and I've converted it to the hexadecimal equivalent. And this is how you're going to see IP6 addresses written as a hexadecimal address. A hexadecimal address is expressed as eight groups of four hexadecimal digits like this. And each hexadecimal group of four can range from zero to FFFF. So a quick review here, you might need help uh, converting binary and hex conversion. Let's say we've got a 16-bit number here, and we want to convert that to hexadecimal. It's pretty easy to convert hexadecimal to binary and back. You want to always have four binary digits to convert to a hexadecimal digit. It converts very nicely. So if we break this down and we put spaces here, these four digits is 0110. You just look this up on the chart over here. Uh, 0110, that's, uh, that's 6 hex. And then um, 0000, that's going to be 0 hex. Uh, 1010 binary is A hex. So that's the easy way to do it, is just to use a, a table to look up. Uh, now another way to look at it is digit weight. You can say the first digit in this little four bits is valued at one, the second bit is valued at two, the third bit is valued at four, and the fourth bit is valued at eight. And then you can compute, this is four plus two, that's six, right? And when you get to A, well, that's because we don't have a 10. So when we get to 10, we start with A, and 11 is B, and so on. So the easy way is to use this chart, and if you really want to compute it, you can use this method. But in this video, you're not going to have to do any conversion. I just wanted to give you this as background information. And another nice thing here, IPv6 addresses are not case sensitive, so you can use uppercase or lowercase hexadecimal digits. So there are some, uh, some ways to simplify these IPv6 addresses, is by suppressing leading zeros. So if we trim off the leading zeros, we can see that this zero can be trimmed off. Three of these zeros can be trimmed off, and three of these, and three of these zeros can be trimmed off. So if we hide those leading zeros, it simplifies our address quite a bit. We cannot trim off trailing zeros, because if, in this case, for example, if we trimmed off the two trailing zeros and just put one one, all the routers would think it was zero zero one one, not one one zero zero. So those are not equivalent. So trailing zeros always have to be there, but leading zeros, like in this case, can be trimmed off. Another trick we can do here is zero compression. That was called zero suppression on the previous slide. This is called zero compression. And what zero compression is, it enables us to basically skip writing these strings of zeros here, these blocks of four zeros. We had a block of four zeros here, and we shrunk it to one. We had a block of four zeros here, and we shrunk it to one zero. Now, we don't actually need to write those at all. So if we can hide these consecutive blocks of all zeros and just write this, colon, colon, right? So if you have a lot of zeros in your address, it's going to shrink up your address quite a bit. Now, the thing is, you can only do this once in an address. So if you have consecutive blocks of zeros here 
and another consecutive blocks of zeros somewhere else in the address, you can only take one of them out. Otherwise, routers would not know where to reinsert zeros, here or here, right? So simplified, our original IPv6 address looked like this, and we simplified it to look like this. And as we can see, the routers know to insert blocks of zeros in between these colons to fill it up. And it also knows that you need leading zeros here, so the router takes care of that. Uh, so it's still a long, hairy address, but not nearly as bad as it was a minute ago. So the address can be broken down into a network portion and a host portion. If you're familiar with IPv4 addresses, this is exactly the same. Except in IPv6, the host portion is always 64 bits and it's automatically calculated. I'm going to cover this in a future video, but the host portion is automatically calculated by the host itself. That means the network portion is also always going to be 64 bits. In CIDR notation, which if you're familiar with IPv4, this is classless uh, interdomain routing, is commonly written with a slash and then the number of bits in the network address, which is normally going to be 64 for IPv6 addresses. Now, if you do subnet an IPv6 address, you, you would use the last 16 bits in the network address as the subnet address. And then you could add a slash 48 to the very end here to indicate that only 48 bits are in the network address. That concludes my video on IPv6 addressing and subnetting. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click the like button at the bottom of the screen. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.